In July 1983, Air Canada Flight 143 ran out of fuel and had to make an emergency landing. In September 1999, NASA lost contact with the Mars Climate Orbiter, its $200 million spacecraft, after it crashed into Mars. And in December 2003, a roller coaster in Tokyo Disneyland derailed. What do these incidents have in common? They all happen because of mix-ups between the metric and imperial systems. Not pumping enough fuel, calculating incorrect trajectories, and using an axle that was too small. Pretty much every country in the world uses the metric system for measurement. Having a universal system would be like having a common language across the world, making it easier to communicate, trade, and invest. So why doesn't the US want to commit to the metric system? Well, technically it already has. Yes, yeah, since all the way back in 1875 and several times since, the United States has committed to the metric system. All its units have been defined in terms of metric standards since the late 1800s, and it's officially the preferred system of weights and measures for United States trade and commerce. So if the country is committed to the metric system, then why isn't it using it? Well, to understand that, we need to take a look back at how the metric system came to be. For hundreds and thousands of years, humans used a variety of number and measurement systems. Within the same country, you'd encounter different units while moving from town to town. This obviously made things like trading a lot more complicated. Fast forward to the French Revolution. At this point in time, France had tens of thousands of different standards. The revolutionaries wanted, among other things, a radical new measurement system that would be simple and universal. People had already been developing a decimal system of measurement for some time, but the revolution sort of sped things up. The French turned to the constants of nature. For example, the first definition of the meter was based on the distance between the equator and the North Pole. Other units in the new system were based upon the meter. One liter was defined as the volume of a cubic decimeter. And the system as a whole was decimal based to make conversions easier. Like any widespread change, people didn't take to it straight away. They even abandoned it for a while before returning to it in 1840. But the system soon became so useful that many other countries began adopting it. A few decades later, an international agreement was formed to refine the accuracy of the standards. 17 countries signed the agreement, including the United States of America. They declared the meter as the length of this metal pole and the kilogram as the mass of this metal cylinder. 85 years later, the metric system was updated again to bring it into modern times. Known as the SI system, it established seven base units. This is the metric system as we know it today. And in case you're wondering, the meter is now defined once again by nature. It's the length of the path traveled by light in a vacuum in 1 299,792,458 of a second. <sighs> anyway, getting back to the point, the US has signed several documents over several decades committing to the metric system. So why is it still using the imperial system today? The US customary system, as it's officially called, is not the easiest system to learn. There's no direct correlation between different units. Instead of a decimal-based system where units can be converted fairly simply, there are several different conversions to remember. But what's interesting is these imperial units are already all defined in relation to SI units. Since 1959, the pound has officially been exactly 0.4535923 kilograms and a yard 0.9144 meters. Which means even though everything you buy in the US is usually in customary units, you can trace it all back to the metric system. Also, the names for various imperial units are sometimes the same, which can be a bit confusing. How much do you think a ton weighs? Do you think of the short ton, which is 2,000 pounds, or maybe the long ton, which is 2,240 pounds? If that's not confusing enough, these are just two of the several tons out there. And if you're sitting there thinking a ton is 1,000 kilograms, that's the metric ton, with an extra any. The US has tried to switch to metric, though, several times. Even though it was authorized for use way back in 1866, the strongest push for metrication came more than 100 years later. In 1975, Congress passed the Metric Conversion Act and established the US Metric Board. The board wasn't given much power, though. It got as far as Interstate 19 in Arizona, the only US highway to have metric road signs. The board was then dissolved in 1982. But then, a few years later, the act was amended to declare metric as the preferred system in the United States. Since 1994, both metric and US customary units have been required on commercial packaging. And the metric system is now the standard in a lot of industries, with construction being one of the exceptions. But the reason it's still not used in day-to-day -day life is because while the act has been amended over the years, one key part hasn't changed. The fact that conversion is still voluntary. Other countries which have converted from imperial to metric, especially in the last 50 years or so, 
have successfully done so because it was compulsory. In Australia, conversion to the metric system began in 1970 with some industries converting first before others. By the end of 1976, most industries and all packaged goods had been converted to metric. Even the birthplace of the imperial system, England, began transitioning to the metric system in 1965 to integrate more closely with continental Europe. For them, it was a long and slow process. There are still systematic hangovers from the imperial system, but in schools, the metric system is taught. These examples highlight the main reason most countries have converted, even when, not if, faced with resistance. It's to keep up with the global economy. In the US today, only federal agencies are required to use the metric system for business where practical. While the US remains imperial, many private businesses are having to produce for both the US and overseas markets. Liberia and Myanmar are the only two other countries which haven't officially made the switch. But in practice, the two countries do use several aspects of the metric system in daily life. It will take some time for the US to switch over and cost a lot initially. But the cost of metrication is one-off compared to the ongoing cost of servicing two markets. So while the rest of the world continues to operate in a metric system, it seems like only a matter of time before the US switches over. Four of the seven base SI units, including the kilogram, are actually currently in the process of being redefined. The definitions will return to the constants of nature, like the meter did. So no more metal cylinder. So what changes will this have for you? Not much. The current definitions are fine for day-to-day -day use, but they're just not up to scratch for modern scientific testing, so when the process is all done, you should notice a difference.